While I began my day with breakfast, for Jessica, visiting a museum was her top priority. Let's see if she's found anything interesting. The National Museum contains over a million objects, including a burial suit made of jade, mummies, the heaviest piece of bronze in the world, pottery, and gold artifacts. And printing plates. Let's not forget that printing originated in China even before the Gutenberg Press. In order to understand the soul of a nation, you have to look at its history because the past explains how we got here. So um, my, my museum visiting technique is like this. I look at the guide, I'll figure out the items in the museum that I like to see because I don't believe in going into a museum and proceeding in, in chronological order. I like to find the things in the guide that I am interested in and then visit them and then walk around and see what else interests me. And, then, and sometimes, you know, for instance, in front of a statue or a painting, I'll sit on a bench and stare at it for a long time and see what it makes me think about. The soul of China that I have seen in, in, in this massive building is a history of record keeping. They like to keep meticulous records and um, have the details of, of, of how people lived during specific periods. History is so important that um, the more forward-looking leaders know that history is so important, sometimes they'll invent it just in order to have one. If I were to write about Beijing, I would try to understand the Chinese character. What is it in their culture that enables them to withstand dramatic upheaval and still emerge as one of the most powerful nations in the world? And how do over one billion people manage to hold on to one common vision of China? After a few hours of looking at exhibits in the museum, I wanted to meet some real living locals. So into the hutong I went. The hutong are alleys formed by intersections of courtyard houses. Many of them were demolished to make way for roads and buildings, but in recent years, some hutong have been declared protected areas. Tucked away in a hutong is an unexpected venue for avant-garde European theater. Its impresario is a dentist by day and art patron by night. Local theater lovers know it for its small-scale plays and dances, and its distinct selection of food and beverages. From the theater, I hopped across town for a deeper conversation on China. World interest in Chinese culture has risen dramatically. Most universities now have Chinese studies courses, if not whole departments. Among the many emigre are academics such as a professor I spoke to. Every time she comes home, she feels like she needs to take a Chinese studies course herself. I am a native of Beijing. I was born here, grown up here. And, and you mentioned 14 generations. That's right. My family has been living here until me. It's a 14 generations. This is stunning to me because uh, I barely know who my great grandparents are. But in China, are people aware of their ancestry all the way back? Yes or no? Yes, as in, there, there is a tradition in Chinese culture that each family, you have a family record. No, as China actually is a very migrant at this moment, a lot of migra migration back mm -hmm. and forth. So many families do not know their family history. But my family, because we have been living here for almost 200 years. Do you have we, written records? We do have records. Since you teach in the U.S., you, mm -hmm. you come back to Beijing every year. What do you miss most about the old Beijing? Any particular place or landmark or tea house? or? Um, I would miss that uh, in the past because people live in the courtyard. So people, you know, common people had more close relationship with each other. Now people all live, move into yeah, in, in high-rise buildings. That's right. They so, only see each other in the elevator. Exactly. And they even sometimes they don't know their neighbor. Our morning continues with Jessica and I searching for the true spirit of Beijing. That's up next on Trippies.